All right, yes, the Rick Jensen Show continues. I'm Randy Dasher filling in today for Rick. This is exciting. On the phone, we have uh, Jason Sorens. He is from the Free State Project. And, uh, well, why would I attempt to explain what it is when we have the expert from there? (laughs) Uh, I teased it before as to what I uh, gather. It's trying to get libertarians or liberty-minded people to move to New Hampshire. And uh, it perked me up. I found it on my Facebook page, I guess, because I like a whole lot of libertarians and libertarian leaning people that I follow on Facebook and all sorts of social media. So, and then I guess uh, Facebook targets ads at you and so forth. And Hey, I guess it worked. So, uh, Jason, thank you for calling the show, sir. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on Randy. Oh, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, did I, did I, uh, describe that correctly about the, um, the free state project being a, uh, an effort to get libert- libertarian or liberty minded people to move to New Hampshire? Yeah, that's right. Um, So it started out with an effort to get uh, liberty-minded people, as you say, to identify the best state for us to get active in the political process. Um, And the first 5,000 people who signed up uh, to move to the state that we identified got to vote, and New Hampshire won that vote. So since then, we've been trying to get Liberty-minded people to move to New Hampshire, uh, get active in the political process, and create a free society. I love the slogan on the license plates, and, and uh, I, I may have heard this before, and then really it didn't sink in. But then I was watching—I don't know if you ever saw The Sopranos. Did you ever watch that? The series? I never did, actually. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, there, there, I'll, I'll say it in a quick nutshell here. There's a scene where the one guy has to leave New Jersey. Um, because he's, uh, for whatever reason, it's irrelevant. But so he goes to New Hampshire and I see the license plates live free or die. And, uh, that, that is out of all 50 States. That's the number one. I mean, that is so good. Live free or die. Is that a, uh, is that a Thomas? No, no, no. Hold on. Uh, Benjamin Franklin quote or. Actually, it comes from one of New Hampshire's own, uh, general John Stark, who is a, uh, a leading general during the American Revolution uh, spoke it at a uh, dinner for um, sort of Revolutionary War veterans in the early 1800s. Oh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. My biggest concern, I'm in Pennsylvania. Now, this show is in Delaware, and I'm right near the border, and the station's right near the Delaware border, so so it's just a 20-minute drive for me. But um, I, uh, the biggest expense in my life and I, you know, the listeners that know when I fill in for Rick or, or when I'm on bantering with Rick is I will never shut up about how much I hate paying school property taxes. So I guess my main question to you before I buy the one way ticket to uh, New Hampshire, um, can you give me an idea how much uh, school property taxes are in the state of New Hampshire? Well, I've got bad news for you, Randy. School property taxes are high here. No, uh, but I think there's a I think there's a um, a silver lining to this, which is that the reason they're high here is that state government is not the one funding education. It's all done at the town level. So you have a lot of control over your schools. You have a lot of control over the the tax rate in your town. Mm-hmm. Towns differ a lot in terms of property taxes. So state government doesn't actually do very much in New Hampshire. Most of it is done at the local level. Um, so, yeah, it's, you know, the, the numbers can be kind of eye popping. I mean, you can expect on like a, you know, $300,000 house um, to, you know, pay anywhere from six to 10000 a year in wow. property taxes. Uh, that, that. Um, but there's no, yeah, it's, uh, yeah so that's, that's high, but there's no state income tax and there's no state sales tax. What I hate about that is that that you never own your house. You rent it from the school district. And in fact, I'm going to start filling out forms like that. When when someone says, do you own or rent? I'm going to say I rent from the school district because I'm I'm, I'm really, I mean, I don't have kids. I'm 53. Uh, I'm married. You know, my wife's, you know, we're past the point of being able to have children. So, you know, I've never had kids. She's never had a child. I mean, and this idea, this socialist idea where, we just, you know, if if my neighbor has seven kids and lives in the same value home, he pays the same to get fifteen thousand dollars per 
child per year worth of education and I get zero, it's just yeah. it's repulsive. But I, I'm, that's not your fault. I'm sure you didn't set that up. <laughs> but um, now tell us some of the other the well some of the positive aspects. I believe you have no sales tax, for, correct? Yeah, no sales tax, no income tax either. So we're one of only two states of which that's true, Alaska being the other one. Um, so we have one of the lowest tax overall tax burdens in the country. And as I mentioned, it's almost all at the local level. There are a few rural towns you can choose where the property taxes are also really low. Um, so you can end up with a, a near zero tax burden if you're willing to live in the middle of the wilderness. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, so that's, that's a, a definite benefit, but, you know, New Hampshire is also a place where it's really easy to get involved in the political process. I mentioned how almost everything is done at the, the town level, and, uh, that's very open to participation, um, town, you know, some towns have town meetings where you actually sit there and, and vote, uh, by raising your hand or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are also towns that, um, just have direct democracy where you go into the voting booth and you you vote on on the proposals that have been brought up at a at a deliberative session. So either way, you're you're directly voting as townspeople on on the the ordinances and the uh, and the taxes and the budget of the town. Uh, at the state level as well, New Hampshire has the largest per capita legislature in the English speaking world. Uh, we have 400 state reps which means that any town with over about 3,500 population tends to have its own rep. Um, so it's very easy to get elected uh, to run for office. You know, they make $100 a year. So That's, it's not a, You took that it's question a, right out of my mouth because I was going to say, well, that must be expensive, but wow, you solved that. That's amazing because uh, in Pennsylvania, these guys make a fortune uh, being, you know, a state representative, state senate. These guys get, you know, wonderful benefits and all that stuff. Well, you guys, you nip that right in the bud. That's awesome. You, you pay them $100 a year? That's right. State senators make $200 a year. So Ooh, righteous bucks. bucks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is too cool for the room. I love that. Obviously, I'm going to ask the dumbest question. Uh, you live there, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That was the dumbest question you're ever going to be asked. Sorry, I'm not the smartest I, I host. I moved, yeah, after the Free State Project shows New Hampshire, I moved. I was in uh, Connecticut and then New York for a while, but uh, had to had to make the move, you know, follow the follow the dream. Uh, and it's and it's been great. I did look it up on a map. I mean, I know it was in the Northeast, but I wasn't, a, you know, I wasn't 100% sure exactly, you know, where it was. But um, I do, I, I know you have a little bit of ocean front, Um how is that? And I, I imagine it's beautiful in the middle of July. It's probably spectacular. Yeah, some big, nice sand beaches, uh, especially in Rye and Hampton. Uh, they're popular places to go. Um, lots of nice beaches as well in, in Maine and, and uh, some in, in Massachusetts and Rhode Island as well. So everything tends to be pretty close up here. So, you know, where I live in Manchester, it's under an hour to Boston you know, under an hour to the beach, um, you know, about an hour, hour and a half to the White Mountains, which are the, the tallest mountains in the Northeast. Uh, so I'm a big hiker, outdoors guy. Uh, I love the Four Seasons. Um, and people here are really friendly. So it's not like uh, southern New England, where <laughs> which hmm. is it's virtually an extension of New York City. And uh, people tend to be ruder uh, in, in New Hampshire. It's uh, people are pretty open and friendly. Okay. Hey, you open to taking calls from from the audience? Yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, I don't have a call screener, so I'm putting this guy right on the air. So it's a recipe for disaster, but I do have a delay. So let me uh, let me go to the phones. Hi, you're live on WDEL. You're on with uh, Jason Soren. Uh, Sorens, who's this? My name is Greg from Middletown. Hey, Greg, how's it going, man? Um, fantastic. I just wanted to, I want to know why we just voted this week. And my wife was extremely um, intimidated because she walked in and they said, are you a Republican or a Democrat? And she said, a Republican. And they said, Republican voting. And that (laughs) totally upset me because, you know, she's standing in a room full of Democrats. And now they all know that she's a Republican. And right now, it's not a good thing to be a Republican. Yeah, they threw her into the wolves. That should be private. That really, you know, that that 
that could be intimidating and it, it, it should just be private. What's it matter? They should just quietly hand her the right one or let her, let her, you know, point to something. You know, they don't need to address the whole room about that. Well, I feel your pain, man. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, mister. Take care. I'll see you. Thanks for calling. All right. Bye. Yep. Bye. All right. There he goes. Fantastic then. So, um, one of the uh, neat things about voting in primaries in New Hampshire is that if you register undeclared, you can choose which party's ballot you want to take at each election. Oh, so, is, is that like an open open primary? They call that, or yeah, it's not a it's not a fully open primary. So if you're a registered Democrat, you have to vote in the Democratic primary and so on. But if you're registered undeclared, you can vote in either one. Oh. Um, so that's a, a nice benefit if you want to you know, vote in the competitive elections, whatever tends to be competitive in a given cycle. Um, you know, I actually took the Democratic ballot this time because we had a really crazy left person uh, running for governor on the Democratic side that I re- really it, wanted to keep out. And uh, and we were successful in doing that. So. Is that the satanic <laughs> transgender person? No, no she's uh, running for uh, sheriff as a Republican. Okay. Actually, in Chester County, uh, yeah. You have a Chester <laughs> County there, a uh, Cheshire. Oh, County. Cheshire. Okay, okay. Because uh, I live in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and my address is no. Uh, but uh, <laughs> wow. Okay, yeah. Because that that was in the news, and um, okay, she's yeah. the one. She ran for sheriff. You're you're, you're right. You're right. Okay. Uh, of course, you're right. But uh, um, now, yeah, I I do like the idea of being able to. Uh, I like the the undeclared rule that you have there because I planned on voting. I'm as libertarian as it gets. I mean, I'm always trying to learn more about libertarianism and so forth. And 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 uh, more devout libertarians correct me on things sometimes. And I'm always willing to learn more and more about the the entire political party and the concept and so forth. But um, uh, I was going to vote for Tulsi Gabbard. For president, because at, at least you know I could hedge my bets to have a Democrat who who has some libertarian leaning values. I mean, she wanted to get us out of all these uh, endless wars. She's a combat veteran. Uh, she wants to end the war on drugs. I mean, the, her that's her first two things that were on her uh, her first two top issues. I mean, if, if someone were just reading that out loud and said, "Who said this?" People probably would have all raised their hands. Yeah, that's Ron Paul. Well, guess what? It was Tulsi Gabbard. But um, mm-hmm. I do like the idea, uh, like you're saying, you could you could be unregistered. Now, how does New Hampshire do as far as um, do do they tend to like did when Ron Paul ran, did he get a higher percentage or did a Rand Paul get higher percentage or, or how about uh, uh, Ron Johnson? No, not Ron Johnson. Let's say Gary Johnson. Did. Yeah, Gary Johnson did very well. Ron Paul did very well. I think Gary Johnson got five percent here, which is, you know, well above his national average. Um, Ron Paul, the second time around, got twenty-three percent, which was, the, I, I believe, wow. the highest that he got in any primary, as opposed to a caucus. That's amazing, twenty-three um, percent, and and that that was a, you know, there's probably at one point there was ten people running. I don't know how many were on the ballot that particular day, but twenty-three percent. That's incredible. Yeah, you know, there were there were a lot of people still on the ballot then. It was, you know, we had the first in the nation uh, presidential primary. So, um, yeah, so that was quite a, an achievement. You know, the, one of the reasons I think that we chose New Hampshire is that the governor at the time actually supported us and lobbied us to choose New Hampshire. And uh, that was the only governor who uh, who did that. So um, there's definitely a, a libertarian streak in New Hampshire. Um, and free staters who've moved to the state have gotten elected, have written legislation that's been enacted into law. So if you're a, a liberty activist out there tired of banging your head against the wall and actually want to uh, to win, um, this is a place where it's happening. Okay, you, would you take another call? Yeah. All right, hold on, please. Let's, uh... Hi, you're on You're on live on WDEL. You're on the air with uh, Jason Sorens. Who's this? Hello, man. Uh, my name is George, and I'm from Wilmington, and I hiked the White Mountains back when I had uh, legs that would do so yeah. <laughs> um, uh, fantastic my car didn't climb mount washington i did uh, <laughs> you know that's what i like to say uh, but i also was told in a fantastic little bit of humor by a very a great uncle of mine who talked about uh 
the, the, the two New Hampshire gentlemen sitting on the porch in their rocking chairs in the small town, and this uh, 1960s uh, peace bus shows up, B.W. Camper all day glow painted, and this long-haired guy comes up to the guy on the porch and says, uh, pardon me, sir, is there any live entertainment in town? And the old New Hampshire gentleman says, ah, there is now. <laughs> <laughs> very well very good good job sir i just wanted to add that it is very silly stuff but it's friday and you know i i think the granite state is awesome uh vermonters and new hampshire new hampshire folk are a different breed i think and uh so you know live free or die is uh, probably i unfortunately would would would, would probably die of the cold so i'm going <laughs> to stay down here but thank you very much for letting me get on thanks george great work yep thank bye. you take care all right, wonderful. And we, we got another caller calling in. You, you cool with calls? Yes, let's all right, do it. All right, cool. Hi, you're live on WDEL. You're on the air with uh, Jason Sorens. Who's this? Yes, hi. Uh, my name is Debbie, and I just want to call to you the, the, the man who responded to his wife voting, and they yelled out Republican. Yeah. And I went and voted, and they yelled out Democrat, and I was very proud be a person voting and I don't think or I don't think people should care what party they are. I think they should be very proud just to vote. Yeah, I think there's just an anti-Trump sentiment, um, and you know, someone might get physical with them. Not you, obviously, but somebody uh, that might not be all 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 there. But that, obviously, not you wouldn't attack anyone. I'm sure you sound like a, a wonderful woman, but. Um, no, I would not. And I'm just very proud to be able to vote. And I think everybody else should just get out the vote. Who cares who you vote for? All right. Well, that's cool. And you're Debbie? Yes, I am. All and right. I awesome. like you better than Rick. How do you like that? And you do what? I, I'm, a lot of road noise. So maybe you have the windows down or something in your car. Yes, I like you better than Rick Jennings. Oh, uh, well, I like Rick better than me. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Have a great day. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Fantastic. Uh, yes, Jason. So um, a few more things uh, because we, we got a commercial break coming up here shortly. But how can someone find out more about the Free State Project? You can go to FSP.org. And uh, you can connect with us if you want to visit the state and meet with other liberty-minded people, um, you know, drop us a line, and we'd be happy to set something up. We also have move-in parties for those of you moving. Oh, cool. So we try to do a lot to support people uh, moving up here. So, yeah, check us out at fsp.org. I would think um, you would get a lot of people who work hard uh, and wouldn't be sponging from the system if they're liberty-minded. You know, <laughs> I don't know too many – People that sponge from the system who can proudly call themselves libertarians. So I would think you're going to keep your taxes low. And if not, the more libertarians you get, I would think in theory those taxes, if they can, I mean, obviously you don't have an income tax, which is outstanding, and you don't have a sales tax, which is something you share in common here with Delaware, which is why my entire childhood was, oh, I need a, 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 I need a, a cassette deck get in the car, drive from Pennsylvania down to Delaware. And if it's $300 piece of audio equipment, there's $18. It's totally worth the $2 in gas to come here. So uh, it's, it's wonderful. I, I, I really I really dig where you're coming from. So it's F as in free, S as in state, and P as in project. Free state project, fst.org or com? Dot org, dot com. Either one will get you there. Oh, awesome, awesome. All right. Any final thoughts there, Jason? Well, just uh, thanks for having me on, Randy. And, you know, I, I really um, appreciate the opportunity and would encourage uh, everyone out there to get active for liberty in our lifetime. Uh, do, you, do you ever watch um, Parks and Recreation? Yeah, I did like that show. <laughs> because they have the libertarian character. That's so cool. Ron Swanson. I play clips of Ron Swanson whenever we come back from the commercials, uh, you know, when I'm just producing Rick's show. And Rick loves him. Rick is a very uh, libertarian-leaning Republican. I am the full-blown crackpot libertarian. So uh, so I think I'll be moving there uh, slightly before Rick. But you never know. Maybe we'll both come up there and do a show. So <laughs> we, have, we have both types here, and we, we welcome both. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jason. You're the man. All right. Thanks, Randy. Have a good one. You too. Take care. 
All right, we'll be back with more of it uh, right after I do this and press that button.